Early in the morning, in order to follow and film the white-headed leaf monkeys, the TV crew arrive at the core area of the Fusui Reserve before sunrise. This is the strange pair they found yesterday. They've arrived just in time. In the Silent Valley, the injured baby monkey and its elderly guardian wake up on the precipice. In the chilly morning wind, they start grooming themselves, then gingerly move off. Abandoned or not, the baby monkey and the older monkey make a lonely pair. And the tail of the older one looks shorter, indicating that he's been in a fight. This odd couple is one of the rarest sights in the whole of the wildlife reserve. Unfortunately, the entire situation in the valley will soon change, dragging these monkeys into a fierce conflict with a troop of migrant rhesus monkeys. A primate native to China, the white-headed leaf monkey is found only in the areas around Fusui in central Guangxi. It's a county famous for sugarcane production. The Kars forest is surrounded by farmland. Every morning, the monkeys leave the place they've spent the night for a higher and sunnier place and prepare to forage. Of a total of 15 leaf monkey species in the world, six can be found in China. In addition to the white-headed and black-headed leaf monkeys, China is also home to the Nepal gray langur, Bari's leaf monkey, the cap langur, and the doch langur. Of these, the wife-headed leaf monkey is one of the most endangered, with a total population of only around 400. Although they can live up to 20 years, Females give birth to only one baby each litter. The baby is not weaned until it's a year old and doesn't reach maturity until it's four or five years of age. Therefore, every single incident that happens here may be crucial to the continuity or extinction of the entire species. In this corner of the jungle, the injured baby monkey has arrived at the foraging place in the foothills. It's a small woods beside the road. Because there are always cars and people passing by, other monkey groups rarely come here. This allows the old and young pair to forage freely for their favorite food. However, as autumn comes, Ongoing food shortages are bound to cause the migration of the monkey troops and a powerful reshuffle within the whole reserve. So even with the pain of loneliness, these relatively happy days will soon come to an end. In order to study the complex behavior of the white-headed leaf monkey, Guangxi Teaching University set up a permanent research base here as early as the 1990s. Many postgraduate students have come here to conduct research. It's on this dry autumn day, many things are silently changing. This is a bachelor's club composed exclusively of young male leaf monkeys. Its nine members come from different monkey troops. They constitute the most aggressive and relentless element in the whole region. Each male monkey in the group is waiting for the opportunity to join other monkey groups and the chance to seize the position of alpha male. Here in Fusui, 
This wildlife reserve is located amid a great expanse of sugarcane fields. The stone hills where the monkeys dwell look like a string of islands and a sea of sugarcane. If it were not for the care of the local people and the local government strangers, the monkeys here would have become extinct long ago. In the small woods by the road, the injured baby monkey and its elderly guardian are still foraging. Living beside the road, they become accustomed to human activities. The arrival of a large group of sugarcane growers barely interests them. However, their fellows lurking in the valley might not be so relaxed or friendly. On the other side of the road lives a troop of eight monkeys. This is their only territory in the crowded reserve. However, as food becomes scarcer, they'll have to find a new place to forage. Their first choice is the small woods the baby monkey inhabits. Migration is a natural survival instinct for most animals. During the early Quaternary period, about three million years ago, the ancestors of the white-headed leaf monkeys migrated from their place of origin, Europe, to North Africa. They then moved through Central Asia to Southeast Asia, and finally reached Guangxi by moving along river valleys and lowlands. However, unlike their ancestors, who migrated grandly across the Euro-Asian continent, Today, these monkeys are faced with the less glamorous but equally daunting task of fighting their neighbors for control of this small reserve. This is how monkey troops communicate. It's almost like a ritual. Its secrets might lie in trying to work out the other's determination and strategies through a long mutual gaze. Led by the alpha male, the monkey troop gradually moves closer. Carefully estimating and judging their opponent's strength. The invaders are approaching. The narrow road is the only barrier between them. This is the most nervous moment for the little monkey because it and its old partner are simply no match for their powerful neighbors. A sugarcane truck stops nearby, disrupting the plans of the invading monkeys. Unlike the odd pair, which has lived here for such a long time, these newcomers aren't accustomed to such a noisy environment. The loud noise causes them to flee in a state of panic. Although it's not the local grower's intention to scare them, the monkeys still seem greatly disturbed. They soon abandon their plan to cross the road and retreat back to the hilltop. The little monkey and its companion hiding in the woods temporarily escape the potential deadly threat.
The white-headed leaf monkey is similar to humans in terms of social behavior as well as physical features. As the most intelligent resident of the valley, they also have a complex social structure and method of communication. From daily life to species expansion and migration, they collaborate and act as a group under the leadership By nightfall, the monkey troop, which previously retreated from the roadside, reaches the border of the reserve. This is another valleys, and is also the perfect path leading to new places to forage. The problem is, they don't know how much vacant land is still available in the reserve, or what kind of situations await them. As it grows darker, the monkeys, which have been busy all day, finally stop foraging and start to look for a safe place to spend the night in this new area. This is a huge press nearly 300 meters high, which is the most dangerous part of their journey. The small leaf monkeys show no hesitation in scrambling up the cliff face. Today, with no fierce predators around, they're still driven by natural instincts, just like their remote ancestors. They don't settle down on the pool 40 minutes later, where they'll await a new dawn. The leaf monkeys maintain a very regular lifestyle. The following morning, the small injured monkey heads once again to the foraging place he visited yesterday. There's an abundance of leaves and fruit waiting there. However, these happy days will soon come to an end. On the other side of the valley, a new group of competitors sets off. Their migration will unavoidably trigger fierce conflict along their route, which is bound to involve the little monkey near the roadside. However, in the insular reserve, the monkey group will have to overcome many difficulties in order to migrate. The winding road in the valley is like a huge obstacle lying before them. In order to find a new place to forage, they will first have to work out how to cross the road. leaf monkey doesn't try the land crossing. His strategy of jumping across might be safer too. The second monkey soon follows suit.
When it gets quiet again, the rest of the monkeys follow behind. This is a highly efficient concerted action. The seemingly unsurpassable obstacles now behind them. This is the territory of the small injured monkey. Sure enough, the invaders do more than just pass by, because they've realized there's plenty of food here. As the invaders approach, the little monkey gets more and more nervous. White-headed leaf monkeys are highly territorial. Different groups normally keep a safe distance from one another or conflicts can easily occur. Although the invaders haven't launched a proper attack yet, they know full well that as long as the competitors stay, they'll eventually have to fight or give up their territory. The invading monkeys soon disperse and start to feast. As the rivals get closer, the little monkey and its old companion are forced to move to a higher location. Having been abandoned by their own peers, they must get as far away from the invaders as quickly as possible. The Fusui Nature Reserve features typical karst terrain with rolling hills and dense jungles. It undoubtedly provides an ideal environment for the white-headed leaf monkeys. However, due to the increasing monkey population and seasonal food shortages, it's becoming increasingly difficult for them to survive here. Today, the newly arrived monkeys soon find that the male monkeys from the Bachelor's Club are lurking on the other side. This is an unexpected encounter. Two monkey troops stand on two separate hills and glare at each other. There's only a gentle slope between them, without any road or farmland. The whole situation is about to spiral out of control. They soon launch into action. These bachelor clubs are comprised exclusively of male monkeys and are always formidable rivals for a regular troop comprising one male and multiple females. As more and more bachelors turn up to fight, the rivals feel increasingly pressured. The white-headed leaf monkey moves fast. Its nimbleness and its 3D visual faculty is similar to that of humans. Its brain can rapidly receive and process images from its eyes and make judgments about such complex issues such as the depth, texture, and distance of objects. All of this is instrumental in helping it move fast and fight effectively in this jungle wilderness. The crisis between the two monkey troops continues to escalate, minute by minute, resulting in a wave of tension and agitation across the whole valley. This is a situation that few humans ever imagine or think about. 
In the distance, the monkey troop on the other side continues to mobilize its forces. As more and more new members get involved, hand-to-hand -hand combat seems unavoidable. After the alpha male gives the go-ahead, the battle finally breaks up. This is an intertroop conflict fought with strange background noises. However, it seems that the two sides prefer to rely more on the tactic of making as much noise as possible to intimidate their opponents instead of engaging in direct physical combat. The alarm is given again by the growling monkey. Amid the shill cries of the monkeys, a violent battle suddenly breaks out across the valley. Meanwhile, some of the bachelors rush down the slope. They send shudders of apprehension throughout the combatants. Suddenly, the monkeys in close combat seem to become mixed up, with the human onlookers no longer able to tell which side they belong to. Soon the Sentinel Monk is also attacked. The assailant violently pursues the guard, trying to chase it away. This life and death fight continues for over 10 minutes in the swinging branches high above the ground. But suddenly, the battle takes an abrupt turn. The belligerent bachelor monkeys suddenly lose their offensive momentum and give up. The fierce battle raging throughout the valley comes to an abrupt end. As the challengers gradually retreat back to the cliff, the valley returns to peace and serenity. The latest statistics show that the monkey population here is steadily rising but the land area is not increasing. This means that conflicts like this are bound to escalate and become more frequent and more violent in the future. By sunset, everything has returned to normal again. The monkeys seem to have forgotten the conflict and go off separately to find a safe place for the night. The small injured monkey and its old companion turn up again. It seems that they're still moving and hiding in this area. They need to take extra care tonight. As night falls and a chilly wind blows, the lonely pair finally find a small spot on the precipice suitable for a night's rest. After following and filming the animals for over 10 days, we're about to wrap up our work and leave Fusue. Perhaps, when dawn breaks, the leaf monkey sleeping on the precipice will have found a way to survive in this insular habit 
and a beginning of a new story.